Today on Wildwood Ways, Edible and Medicinal Treasures, we're going to take a look at the remarkable red reishi. The red reishi is one of the most prized of medicinal mushrooms. In fact, it is one of the most prized of any of the medicinals that one can find anywhere in the forest. Red reishi is famous in Chinese medicine as a mushroom which restores the body and mind's equilibrium. In modern times, science has demonstrated that this particular mushroom is full of polysaccharides and other beneficial ingredients which are extremely healthful. Red reishi is generally prepared by slicing it thin, drying, and powdering. And then that powder is used to make teas or consumed in other ways at ratios of 100 to 1,000 milligrams per day. I make a tea out of it. Unfortunately, red reishi does not taste very good. Like all Ganodermas, it is bitter. And a tea made from red reishi tastes as if you went to the store, bought those common button mushrooms, which are the Agaricus bisporus, boiled them, and then drank the water. There are six types of red reishi, and all reishis, including the red reishi, share this distinctive growth pattern. In this particular image, we have a stipe from which it emerges from the log, and we have the pilus growing to one side. When a reishi has a stipe, it always assumes this form. It might be likened to a periscope. Apart from the distinctive periscopic or fan shape of the reishi, they also have a distinctive glossy appearance as if they've just been varnished. Even if the weather has been dry for weeks on end and the fungus is absolutely parched, the top of the pilus and the stipe will still have that distinctive varnish look. A pilus with a glossy varnish looking surface, white flesh and spore tubes under the cap are distinctive features in the identification of the reishi mushroom. Also note that reishis tend to bruise brown. Very young reishi have whitish to tannish undersides. This is where their spores come from. Older reishi, by comparison, have darker undersides. You can also see by the small holes in various places around the reishi on my left that it has been tunneled by various small vermin. It is almost impossible to find reishi without vermin, so I suggest you don't throw them away. Instead, take them home, slice them very thinly, and then set out the thin slices. The vermin, realizing they no longer have shelter within the mushroom, will crawl away. Leave them out like this for an hour or two. Then take the sliced reishi and put it in a dehydrator until it is dried crisp as a potato chip. Ganodermas are distinctively shelf mushrooms that emerge from living or dead wood, and they are very hard to mistake for other mushrooms. However, as always, if you're going to forage any mushroom, you should at least understand the basics of mushroom identification. However, Ganodermas are a pretty safe one to start with. There are no poisonous lookalikes. All the shelf mushrooms will either be edible, useful in some way, such as a medicine or for art, like the Ganoderma opalinatum, or they will be tough, woody, bitter, leathery, and tasteless. There are no deadly Ganodermas and no deadly shelf mushroom, at least not east of the Mississippi River in North America. Even the fairly common Ganoderma opalinatum, such as this young specimen, has medicinal value. And like the red reishi, it is also tough and shares a bitter taste. However, it too can be made into a potent medicinal tincture, or dried and powdered, or processed into a tea. Red reishis, along with all the other types of Ganodermas, can usually be found in mature forests like this. Red reishis will typically be found growing on live, but dying, or dead hardwood logs. While reishis are generally known for growing on living or dead hardwood, this particular group is growing on a dead hemlock, a softwood. From the perspective of a mushroom hunter or mycologist, this is a very interesting find for that reason. So never neglect a softwood forest as a source. In fact, speaking specifically of the maritime provinces in Canada, I have found that mushrooms grow in places that are often the exception to where they grow elsewhere in the world. For example, the cantharellus mushroom, no more commonly as the chanterelle, will generally be found in hardwood forests further south in the USA, in places like uh, Iowa and Ohio. However, here in the maritime provinces, the most common place to find chanterelle mushrooms is in softwood forests. As I stated in another video, I have found that looking for chanterelles in spruce forests, where the ground is especially covered with sphagnum moss and where water flows nearby, is a virtually guaranteed way of finding abundant chanterelles. However, this seems to be more an exception than the rule, at least here in North America, especially here in the maritime provinces. Thank you for having joined me for another episode of Wildwood Ways, Edible and Medicinal Treasures. 
keep watching because we'll have many more lessons on the edible and medicinal bounty to be found all throughout the wilds of North America. Go soft, go gently, and leave no trace. Let's go home, boy. <laughs>